In these films, we take time to sit with the artwork, resting comfortably in a chair, allowing body and mind to settle and relax into the painting. We absorb first impressions, colour, relationships, themes and content, and engage with the artist's technique and skill that guide us into contemplation of the piece. We notice how we feel. Building a more sensory relationship with the art piece, we can imagine ourselves into the painting. The dancers take the qualities and dynamics of the painting, heightened by the music, and find ways to express the impressions the paintings have inspired. The museum is a beautiful and inspiring space to dance in, an intimate stage shared with great works of art. Uniquely, individual responses are built into shared dances and deepen the enjoyment and understanding of the humanity of art. Welcome to the Fitzwilliam Flower Gallery. We are surrounded by flowers from all seasons, keeping fresh across the ages. We still ourselves in the face of this cacophony of colour, shape, form and symbolism. The gallery houses collections of all kinds, architectural arrangements, formally framed. Our two 17th century Dutch artists painted in a time of voracious Dutch exploration and scientific inquiry, feeding a fascination to categorise, record and list the natural world. Normally housed in the Dutch art gallery next door, we enjoy the great pleasure of having Jan Davids de Heem's Flowers in a Glass Vase brought into the flower gallery for our closer perusal. Flowers in a Glass Vase was painted in the 1660s. This shimmering piece, bursting with flowers, is a feast for the eyes, suspended in a majestic blackness, a blackness that pushes each flower forward. The blackness is absolute, but it is not dark. There is a brightness shining into the many-hued flowers. We can't help but try to name the flowers we know, this is a collector's treasure. How many, how rare. We are so close to the flowers, we can breathe in the scents and feel the textures of the petals, the gossamer bodies of the insects. We wing our way across the velvet black spaces, balancing carefully. We begin to notice further life, tiny creatures crawling, tucking quietly into the petals, stalks, thorns and berries. And then, a further delight as we notice a shiny reflection of curved light, inviting us to reach our hands into the painting, cup them around this invisible black vase, holding the rhythm and pulse of the arranged forms. The exquisite technical brilliance of the painter presents a meditation on the transformative aspect of the natural world. We humans strive to capture and commemorate, but we too can only be a part of the drama of the cycles of life. We can enjoy this beauty and yet feel the very wide wings of time at our backs. Next, we move quietly into Rachel Roisch's Insect and a Lizard in Adele, painted in 1684. Again, light directs our attention, drawing our eyes to the creeping tendrils and intricate designs on the leaves. We sway along rising spines of curved stem, leading us to nodding poppy heads 
and a single tranquil carnation. Butterflies are incandescent, caught in bright light against a dark backdrop. In Greek, psyche means both spirit and butterfly, symbols of renewal, transience and freedom of spirit. The transformation from chrysalis to winged beauty echoes the mysteries of life and death and the journey of the soul. Roish has brought us to a small secluded hollow, a damp mossy ground, the edge of a pool of water where life is blossoming. We are also witnessing the beginnings of decay in curling, dying leaves. The painting is imbued with complementary and reflected colours shifting across the canvas. The mossy green ground, yellowing banks and leaves, and newly unfurling stems and leaves. Poppy reds and crimsons of the carnation are repeated again vibrantly in the wings of the butterflies. As our eyes become accustomed to the variations of greens, we see a lizard hiding in the roots. It has caught an unfortunate butterfly for its prize. We sense more than see the dark, still water. Looking closely, another dark-eyed creature comes into sight, waiting to pounce. New inventions in microscopes facilitate a detailed examination of minutiae. Luminous paint techniques everlastingly created an impression of exquisite delicacy and freshness. Whilst the art academies were almost exclusively the domain of men and focused on life studies and historical subjects, flower paintings were considered a safe pursuit for some women. As we consider this painting, we can reflect on the journey of Rachel Roish's long life, painting throughout her life, carefully inscribing her age of 83 on the back of a canvas, balancing a life of marriage and the birth of 10 children, and her experiences as the first female member of the Painters Guild in The Hague. In this grand room, we notice the delicacies with which flowers reach, lean, tumble, curl, suspend and float. Orchestras of moving colour. We invite you to imaginatively disassemble your human form, allowing yourself the magic of transformation, so you can easily clamber into these paintings. Whilst our bodies express and explore the symbolism and narratives created by the arrangements of these flowers, created some 400 years ago. <laughs> 